morning. I was going to uh, start with Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay. So raise your hands if any of you have ever been called a divider. Okay. Almost everyone. <laughs> Almost everyone. I was going to say mashallah, but no. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess if you just made the decision to be here, um, you have probably already been labeled as a divider, whether you know it or not. However, um, I'd say um, through the course of this presentation, um, I'm going to explore the concept um, of what that really is and whether you and I qualify as dividers or not. So, so it, I'm talking about concealment of uh, the truth, and God talks about it in the Quran too. So let's find out what concealment really is. The legal definition for concealment is fraudulent failure to reveal information which someone knows and is aware of, is aware that in good faith he or she should communicate to another. So it's something that you know that you should probably tell the other person, but you decide not to. And that is willful concealment. So, right when we start reading the Quran in Surah 2, you know, shortly after, you know, God starts to educate us and teach us about concealment. Uh, in Surah 2, verse 41, it says, You shall believe in what I have revealed herein, confirming what you have. Do not be the first to reject it. Do not trade away my revelations for a cheap price and observe me. Do not confound the truth with falsehood, nor shall you conceal the truth knowingly. So people have been given the truth, but they decide to conceal the truth knowingly. And God says that people that who, who do that, they're actually trading away God's revelations for a cheap price. It doesn't necessarily mean that you charge a cheap price for the revelations. <laughs> I've heard that too, but it means, you know, you, you, you've, for a small price, you've decided to conceal God's truth. So knowing, knowingly people cover it up because it exposes something. God says, do they not know that God knows everything they conceal and everything they declare? So they don't want us to know a lot of things. There's people that know a lot about submission, about the message, but they decide to cover it up. They decide not to talk about it. And the reason why is something that we would talk more about. You know, they say, don't talk about Rashad, for example. I mean, we've heard it plenty of times. They say, don't mention the audios and the videos. You know, don't confuse people by talking about insurance. Don't talk about perfect happiness all the time. Why do you guys always talk about perfect happiness? Right? Those are all examples of concealing the truth. Now, what does God say about people who do something like that? Based on the Quran, we understand that people who actually conceal God's revelations and God's testimonies are the most evil people on earth. It says in 2.140, um, do you say that Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the patriarchs were Jewish or Christian? Say, do you know better than God? Who is more evil than one who conceals, conceals a testimony he has learned from God? God is never unaware of anything you do. So a good example of this concealment is um, when uh, I was you know, confronted with a group of people that didn't, uh, you know, really believe in God's promises. And talking to them over and over and asking them questions, it was almost like they were willfully trying to cover it up and, and trying to throw verses on top of the other, trying to just, like, bury the truth inside of it. Um, so we understand from the Quran that People who do that, um, you know, people who practice selective emphasis and concealment, they're actually abusing the scripture. 
It says abuse of the scripture, selective emphasis, and, and concealment. Those who receive the scripture recognize the truth as they recognize their own children, yet some of them conceal the truth knowingly. Concealing the truth is a gross offense. Those who conceal our revelations and guidance after proclaiming for the people in the scripture are condemned by God. They are condemned by all the condemners. So it is a gross offense. And as submitters to God alone, uh, it is incumbent upon us that any information that we have, it is our responsibility to pass that information on to the next generation and generations after that in its pristine purity as we have received them. There's no room for interjection and personal interpretation and, and trying to hide the truth. It says, God took a covenant from those who received the scripture. You shall proclaim it to the people and never conceal it. But they disregarded it behind their backs and traded it away for a cheap price. What a miserable trade. So why do people practice this sort of concealment? And what is in it for them? Right? One thing is for sure, based on the verses of Quran, God says that about the hypocrites, that they worry. Uh, it says 964, the hypocrites worry that a surah may be revealed exposing what is inside their hearts. Say, so go ahead and mock. God will expose exactly what you're afraid of. So people who conceal God's revelations knowingly know for a fact that if this information gets out to the people outside, it will expose themselves. So it's, it's almost like they know what's inside themselves, and they're afraid that will come out and expose them. But we know that the, God's plan is to expose the disbelievers anyways. God's plan is that you know, submission will prevail. Any information, any truth that God has presented, sooner or later it comes out. 47.30 says, if we will, we can expose them for you so you can recognize them just by looking at them. However, you can recognize them by the way they talk. God is fully aware of all your works. So you can recognize it when you talk to people and you can sense that they're trying to conceal God's revelations. They're trying to, um, you know, argue against the truth and trying to make up all sorts of excuses to try to tell you, no, you don't want to offend this person or that person. You don't, you don't want, you know, you, you want, we want everybody to be happy and, you know, we want everybody to be united, right? I mean, we've all heard that. We want people to be united, so we start to conceal God's truth. And I think that's the worst thing you can do to try to unite people is to conceal God's truth. Um, in fact, we know that people who do that are not uh, people who will actually unify. 461 says, when they're told, come to what God has revealed and to the messenger, you see the hypocrites shunning you completely. So you can recognize that when you invite them to the truth, when you invite them to judge based on God and his messenger, the hypocrites will shun you completely. Uh, they'll end that, chain, they'll end that uh, channel of conversation, that, you know, that dialogue that you could carry on to bring them to talk about the truth. And they'll disregard you completely. If they have the power, they'll stop you from talking, if they could. We all know about that. Um, so what are the effects of concealment, right? Uh, so we have people who want to unify, but they will conceal the truth. However, we understand that concealing the truth is actually one of the biggest causes of division. In fact, this is the key factor that you can identify division. God tells us in the Quran, in Surah 15, 1589, and proclaim, I am the manifest warner. We will deal with the dividers. They accept the Quran only partially. By our Lord, we will question them all about everything they have done. Therefore, carry out the orders given to you and disregard the idol worshipers. 
We will spare you the mockers who set up another god beside God. They will surely find out. So not only are these people the dividers, we understand that these people have another god beside God, and these people are the idol worshipers and mockers who have set up another god beside God. So a good example of, um, a good example of these idol worshipers you know, uh, or dividers, we see you know, people in our religions like Shia, Sunnis, and Islam, you know, pagans, different types of pagans in Christianity and all sorts of religions. And, and even so many so-called submitters um, are actually um, you know, following all, all sorts of things. Um, I was just talking to somebody who was watching the live stream and he was telling me that uh, somebody, somebody who is watching our conference discussion is actually right now um, advocating three prayers, right? And that's not, that's not submission. Um, but, you know, Satan wants to conceal God's revelations and, and make people believe that there's only three prayers, for example. So all these are, are good examples of dividers. When you start to conceal God's truth and you start to isolate certain aspects of religion and overemphasize on the other ones, that actually fosters division. That actually fosters hatred and people forming different religions. So if you wanted to unify people, you would unify them based on the truth and the entire truth. Once everybody has the entire picture, everybody could be united. But if you wanted to do that, however they wouldn't, some people wouldn't because it will expose themselves, so they can't. So what does God say about these idol worshipers then? Well, God tells us in the Quran that idol worshipers are polluted. And idol worshipers are not allowed to frequent God's masjids. We've had discussions about you know, how, for sure, like people who worship Muhammad and, and Jesus should not be allowed I mean, I guess there's a disagreement on that, too, sometimes. But, uh, but we, we know from these verses that people who conceal the truth are also idol worshipers. I mean, this is not a far-fetched explanation. This, these are actual verses of the Quran where God is telling us that these people set up another God besides God. And why does God say that? I mean, of course, God wants every one of us to uh, frequent God's masjids, and he wants all of us to get the message. But... These people are the dividers, and God knows that if you, if you allow these people to come and penetrate, they'll cause more division. Um, also in uh, 30, also in, uh, so this one, 30, 32, God says, do not fall into idol worship like those who divide their religion into sects, each party rejoicing with what they have. So these people who conceal God's revelations, they're happy with the portions that they have. They'll take what they want and they'll discard what they don't like. That is the essence of division. So what else? You know, we have the example of Moses and Aaron, and we talked about it before, when, when they saw what happened. You know, uh, you know, God says, let us part company with the wicked people. Now, that wasn't division. Uh, 5822, this is not division. Run for your life. 5822, God says, you will not find people who believe in God in the last day, befriending those who oppose God and his messenger, even if they were their parents. We've talked about parents. We love our parents. I mean, it's a second commandment, but even if they're your parents or their children or their siblings or their tribe, for these he decreed faith into their hearts and supports them with inspiration from him and admits them into gardens with flowing streams, wherein they abide forever. God is pleased with them, and they are pleased with him. They are the party of God. Most assuredly, God's party are the winners. So this, this is a prime example of a situation where you can no longer be part of a group or individuals who practice this sort of an evil act to divide God's religion, and, and for you to... Uh, be able to practice God's religion properly and, and give it to the people in its entirety and to save your own self uh, and save your own religion, save the message for yourself and for other generations. You know, it's our responsibility 
to pass it on as it is and not uh, and, and stand up for the truth and not just let it you know be some watered down version of everybody's opinions. So in conclusion, we understand that um, this is what. <laughs> okay, so in conclusion, we, we understand that, you know, what division is, and, and concealing the truth is what causes division. You can't unify people and, and, and allow them to be united by just covering up part of the truth that, you know, you might have a problem or you might have a problem, so let's just, you know, make sure that you know, we always stand united with God and we, have, we, we, we understand that if, if you have a problem with something, inshallah with time you'll understand it. Know that you shouldn't worry about, you know, somebody coming to the truth because they might have a problem with it. I think if somebody would have a problem with it in due time, God will allow them to learn more about it by talking about it. If you talk about these issues, People will learn more and they'll, they'll, you know, they'll be harmony. But if you don't talk about it, obviously that's going to cause more damage. Any questions? Well. OK, so we have four minutes for questions. Um, we're going to take some right now. I'll take the ones I've seen first. So. Thank you, Solomon. It was a beautiful speech. So I just want to read uh, 917 again. Uh, it says, the idol worshippers are not to be too frequent masters of God while confessing their disbelief. Um, I think that is very important, while confessing their disbelief. Uh, and then there is 96 that God says, you know, grant them safe passage just for them to come and hear word of God if they are not confessing disbelief. Right. No, I mean, that's, that's, that's a given. Obviously, you're not, if somebody doesn't say anything, you're never going to know what's inside, right? So, but if they confess, then, then you know. Like, I think the Master of the Covenant gave an excellent example of his own father. And he told him that he wasn't to step foot in this masjid again because he wanted to put Muhammad's name next to God. Right? And he said he was, Rashad was his favorite son, and you know they had an excellent relationship before. So, um, Marshall, a great speech, uh, Solomon. Here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I guess my question is: um, so we know a lot of people don't like to um, hear the truth, right? It hurts. And um, so my question to you is that: is it possible to um, conceal the truth just so you can be more inviting, you know? So you can, like, invite more people by uh, not really presenting the truth the way it should be presented. So I just want, you know, so I just want to see what you think. Since, right. Um, I, I think that, obviously, you know, if you're just looking for numbers, I mean, you might, like, start, you know, thinking about other things that you can get more people. I mean, religion is probably not the best way if you want to just bring more people. I mean, you can start doing other things and bring people. <laughs> but, you know, religion is a business a lot of, for a lot of people. I mean, they make millions. And they, so, so for them to do things like that, it, it, it obviously makes sense. But for us, who are not using religion as a business and who are actually using that for our soul, you understand, like, I mean, what, what are you trying to promote? Are you trying to promote God's light or are you trying to promote disease and, and, and cancer and all kinds of miseries into people's lives. You're, you're trying to promote, if you want to promote happiness, you want, you want to invite the people. So you have to figure out first, what do you want to invite the people to? If you want to invite the people to the truth, then you have to give them the truth. If you want to just invite people for whatever, I mean, you can just give them freebies and just, you know, tell them things that make them happy and you know that, but that's not that's that's not gonna fulfill your purpose in life to to you know do what God says, right? Because God says you have to proclaim the truth. 
And God is the one who controls people's hearts. So, you know, you think you might be inviting to somebody by, you know, saying something blasphemous, right, because that person might like it. I mean, you're going to pay for it. And we see that. I mean, we see all these religions that have done that in the past, and we know it's God's plan that they're all going to die out and submission will prevail. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Loud and clear. My question is also about 917. Um, yeah, so I've heard a lot of, like, discussions in the past about how, like, even if someone's a known hypocrite or an idol worshiper, I mean, well, kind of the same thing maybe, but what, the, like, they would say you have no grounds for preventing someone from coming into the masjid, so, like, how would you interpret a community like following this verse? Like what steps? And is like is it okay? And like how do you prevent someone who's like you know is an idol worshiper from right. entering? Right. So I, I definitely see that when it comes to like when it comes to your home, it, that decision is very easy. I mean, you can just straight away tell the person they're not welcome, right? But if I think the the when when it's like a neutral place. Uh, where like in a, like in a masjid or something like that. Obviously, then there's a lot of people involved. It's a community affair, so God says the believers' affairs are decided after due consultation. So I think the best best approach in in that situation would be that you would actually talk about it. You would talk about the problem. You would talk about the situation. You'll try to talk to the people that others have doubts about whether or whether you know it's they're on the right path or not. However, I think the agreement has to be made on the general principle that if, if you come to that conclusion that somebody is a hypocrite, proven hypocrite or an idol worshiper, that we shouldn't you know, allow them to frequent God's masjid. I mean, when God says they're not to frequent God's masjid, I mean, think of it like you know, if you have a kid and you want to like, tell them strongly, like, do not, you're not to eat this ice cream, for example. I don't know, I can't think of a better one. So that means that means you better not do it, right? So, I mean, this is God's home, right? I mean, this is God's master place of worship. You don't want to pollute it with idol worship. And so, so who's going to come and, and tell them not to come? This, God's obviously talking to submitters. Hello. Uh, thank for your nice speech. Uh, I have a very quick question. Uh, through your research, did you find any definition of the truth in Quran, or is there any absolute truth kind of definition in Quran? Sure. Well, God says the Quran is the absolute truth. So, well, when you conceal it, it means that you know it for fact, or you just uh, kind of think that the, the thing that you know and conceal it is that you interpret Quran and then you know it and then you conceal it. Um, is it is it like that or, or? I mean God says the people conceal but the he, truth knowingly like what I mean is like right. the the people understanding would be different, right? And then if you conceal it is it bad? Meaning? Right. So I I think when God says people conceal the truth knowingly, they don't conceal it by saying that they know it, but you know, they, they don't say that. They say, no, that's not the way it is. They're in denial. So they, they, tr they know inside themselves what, what, what it is that God is saying because we know God's revelations are straightforward. But they will pretend that they, they don't know it that way. They'll, they'll pretend they'll, they're in denial. They, they want you to think, well, that's not talking about this. It's talking about that. But, you, but inside, inside their hearts, you know, God says they do it knowingly. Like, peop like the things, the examples I talked about, these are not examples that that people said do not exist. I mean, they say, okay, these are things that do exist. These things were given to us, but these were opinions or interpretations of, you know, the human messenger or things like that. So they make up all, all kinds of excuses. However, I think for believers, we have physical, you know, tangible evidence that everything that is given to us is the truth from God. So, I mean, that is the absolute truth. Awesome. Thank you. Give Solomon a round of applause.